Oh man, I'm so excited to bring up this next guy. I really like the way he works, and I know you guys are too. It's been fun having him in the class. How about a big round of applause for Jim Fobister? Let him hear it, Jim! All right, my drunk little angels, how are you doing today? You doing good? My name's Jim, and what people really hate about me is that I used to be a pastor, and now I work at a strip club. And the journey from becoming a pastor to working at a strip club is much easier than you might think. On one hand, you have a life of purity and chastity, and on the other hand, you have two strippers named Purity and Chastity. And I used to minister in a denomination called the Disciples of Christ, which means that we had communion every service, and we did the Jonestown Massacre, which is where Jim Jones killed 900 people with Kool-Aid, and uh, that made leaving a lot easier. So now I work at the Cheetah, which is like 10 minutes from where I used to be a pastor, which is great. I get to see my whole flock as they struggle with temptation and sometimes their own sexuality. So I see them and I'm like, Rhonda, it's okay to be gay here and also your husband knows, so that's fine. And uh, the jobs are a lot more similar than you might imagine and the places share a lot in common. Like people come to both buildings filled with hope and leave feeling very guilty. They're also very important to a wedding, which is good, you know. The strip club the night before, and then the church the day right after. And the grooms come in the night before and immediately regret their decision to get married. And the brides go in the day after and meet the groom's family, and they immediately regret their decision to get married as well. <laughs> in both places, people are just looking for love, and in both places, they have to pay. And the <laughs> And the church will take about 10% of your money in the most boring way possible. And at the strip club, we'll take 100% of your money and we'll feel great about it. So how many people have actually given to church? Anybody? No one? This is great, okay. I don't know if you realize this, but your money doesn't really make it all the way to God. And I didn't realize that. So when I was 12 years old, and the first time I touched a titty, I tipped God $20. And obviously, that prayer didn't work. Or did it? Because my life is a twilight zone of titties right now. They've lost all meaning. Like, sir, your tits do nothing for me. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but um, I do have one joke that I always works on the girls. And, I did, and you should probably try this at your work if you feel like getting fired. Um, but they'll come up to me and they'll just be like, there's this guy that smells so bad. And he's like, and I just drift my eyes downward and I go, I'm sorry, I can't hear you over your tits. <laughs> <laughs> and they laugh, you know, that's how they make the money. And my boss laughs too. So it's a win-win, really can't get fired there. It was like a lot harder to get fired at the church with the Jonestown massacre because like, what, am I gonna show up late? It's like, well, that guy killed 900 people. What did I do? <laughs> in both places they have the rituals at the church we got baptism and I baptized 26 people I hope those still count um, and a good baptism you really have to hold them under just as long as you can they're going to struggle to come up but just keep them down and then they come up gasping for air and look reborn because that's what grandma came to see she wanted to see you be reborn and you're not doing a good job but the kids loved it. They love drowning. It's great. <laughs> and at the strip club, we have the ritual of throwing money. So people grab a stack of ones, like a hundred at a time, throw it up in the air, and then it rains down. And if you stop them in the middle of what they're doing, they have no idea what's going on. None. None whatsoever. But they do get a feeling that money doesn't control every aspect of their life. And after it falls down, I have to pick it all back up again. And it's great, because I got a little squeegee I just take the big pile of money, put it in a bag, and I feel like the weirdest farmer in the world. <laughs> and I am credited with one exorcism. That's a different story, not very funny. But I also like to uh, suggest that we do reverse exorcisms. That's where you take the priest out of the child's body. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, 
I do have one story I want to share from my life. And it's not from the strip club. Because if you walk into people having sex at the strip club, that's not funny. You walk into people having sex at church, that's very funny. <laughs> very funny. But I used to run a camp for kids up in the New England Keswick Mountains. It was a pretty beautiful place. And uh, there was like, I was 19. And everyone working for, and the campers were like 17 and 18. It was weird. And everyone working for me was like 27. So my management style was like, God told you to work harder. I know I'm like 10 years old. But uh, I worked with a very special, handy, one spe special handicapped guy named James Bond. I mean, that's what he went by. And uh, he thought he was very smooth like my, James Bond. He'd slide up to the vending machine that had the uh, pictures of the counselors on it and just make out and steal kisses, which was pretty cool. So I should have known something was going on. And uh, I was sitting next to him. We were, had a movie night going on. And he looks over at me and says, I love you, Jim. I said, I love you too, James Bond. He says, no, I love you. And he jumped on top of me and pinned my arms back. And then he starts humping the shit out of me. And I'm thinking, oh God, I saved myself for marriage. Give me the strength to break free. And he didn't. So I just kicked him off and he looked at me just like James Bond would, which was really weird. Um, and I just have one piece of advice for you guys. If you go to the strip club, don't take off your wedding ring. Because people come back for their licenses, their wallets, their cell phones, but never a wedding ring. That's because if you lose your wedding ring in a strip club, your marriage is over. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Right there, Jim. Let's go see him at the Cheetah.